Brad with the New England Metal Channel, and I'm here with uh, Agador tonight. Thanks, guys, for bringing us this interview. Um, Thanks for having me. I uh, guess we're going to start off with the pretty basic question. Um, what's the story of Agador? A um, little biography. Uh, sure. Uh, I'm Tom. I'm Adam. I'm Tom. Justin on guitar. Um, I guess Agador started with uh, me and Adam. We've been playing in bands since we were in grade school together. And uh, that was like, what, like 15 or 16? Yeah. Um, when we met each other and played in our first band together, which was called... Uh, I forget. Man. Yeah. It wasn't good. Something for nothing. <laughs> Something for nothing. Yeah. Um, I like that title. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. It was a discount. Um, but yeah, after a decade or more of playing in separate pieces or together, we uh, eventually... Um, formed a kind of recording project that was just me and him writing stuff and uh, producing it in my house and it developed into Agador within three years we got all five pieces for the band and now we're playing out live that's awesome that's, that's really cool um, and how did you guys come up with the name Agador I think that's just an awesome name um uh, have, you, have you guys ever seen the movie The Birdcage? Agador Spartacus. He insists on being called by his full name. Yes! Okay, so Hank Azaria's character is uh, their faithful houseman, Agador Spartacus. Yes. Um, and uh, it's a great movie. Uh, I don't think it's any of our favorite movie or anything like that, but uh, we thought it would be really funny if people uh, were searching for a metal band that they saw and got a picture of Hank Azaria from that movie instead. Uh, it's uh, just been something we embraced wholeheartedly. It was the only thing we all nodded immediately on when we were having a discussion. And so that's usually how it works, right? Immediate <laughs> Jokes. Jokes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we like to just like have fun with everything. So um, the, the whole movie makes us laugh. Uh, mm -hmm. The idea of Agador makes us laugh. So um, we're just trying to have fun. Try not to take yourself seriously. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. What is the coolest venue you guys have ever played? Ooh. We just played in Boston at uh, the Midway Cafe. That was pretty cool. Um, tiny little room, but uh, there was a decent amount of people there. And uh, they got a really cool backdrop with like a, all their uh, like history, and we've been here for this long on it. So we got a couple cool shots of us playing there that we're pretty excited about. Ralph's is definitely kind of home for us, though. Yeah, we play yeah. here. Um, more than anywhere else. Yeah, yeah it's been kind of our... It, it, it started being our home, and then we, we started to branch out and ended up going to Rhode Island and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that, yeah. too. But yeah, yeah. in New Hampshire, too, I think. Yeah, right. yeah. 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 Cryptodira. Uh, you guys Cryptodira yeah. and Replicire and Wretched Tongue. That was a that was actually a really cool venue, too. And, um, and uh, yeah, that was, that was a neat one. And then, um, you know, being that uh, we wanted to try to capture all of New England and um, you know, we, it, it's kind of cool to be back home at Ralph's. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. definitely kind of feel like this was the home club and the one that, that started us, you know, for us. And, uh, and, and you guys were definitely the, the first band. So. Yeah. Well, that was awesome that you came to that show. We, uh, we got that video out uh, as quickly as we possibly could, and people loved it. So it Yeah, awesome. and that's, that was our goal, yeah. is, is to have that. And, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my brother and give him a chance. So, um... What was the band that you would like to tour with, both national and local? So, you know, one that you kind of aspire to tour with nationally, and then maybe maybe a band locally that you just love touring with. Well, um, that's a that's a tough question. Um, so, given like the type of music we play, I think it would be appropriate to. Uh, as far as like a national act, I would say something like Unearth. Yeah. Uh, I actually, uh, we've met Ken Susi a couple of times. Yeah. He, he's from our hometown. That's, um, they kind of count as local too. Yeah, exactly. Right. right? Yeah. Um, but they're they're a national act that I've loved for a really long time. Um, back when I was a metal singer, um, I covered some of their music. Um, we all really enjoy their stuff. So, um, national act, on earth for sure. Um, touring for a local act. Um, Local, local, local. Um, we played a oh. played a show with Ivory Tower uh, a while back. 
uh, you guys actually had that on the first uh, the first episode, and those guys are a lot of fun. That's a, a fun live set that I think people get entertained by. They staple their heads so on the forehead and shit. <laughs> right, there's uh, a chance. Yeah. Um, so just in terms of having played with those guys before, they seem like that would be a good thing to get people out. Uh, that's like, it's good in the pocket, Acacia String type stuff. I like that quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. National Act, though, favorite band. It'd be cool to go on tour with Every Time I Die. That would be fucking awesome. <laughs> it would. It would. Anyone for you? Nah, I'm good with. <laughs> yeah, we, we covered it. Second, second, both of those, huh? All right. Sure. Um, the band or song that gave you your love for music, like what? What was that spark that kind of hit it, or was it just always there? For me, it was uh, Glassjaw. Um, I remember for a while when I moved here, I was kind of floating back and forth between listening to hip hop and metal. And uh, like I listened to a lot of mainstream stuff, like uh, Linkin Park and stuff like that. Um, and Glass Show was the first band that was kind of like underground or like indie that that made me think about you know what other type of music, what other types of music were out there. Um, and that definitely solidified my love for for metal and hardcore and the music in the area. Wow. Um, I mean, for me, it's, uh, if I'm talking about the thing that really got me like into music on my own and not things that was like introduced to me by my, my parents and whatnot, it was definitely uh, 311's Blue Album was the first thing I ever got. I was like nine years old, eight years old. And like that was that was the first thing I got that like really stuck with me and kind of got me into playing some somewhat heavier things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was definitely the start of the path at like eight years old. <laughs> Uh, Pearl Jam 10 for me. I wanted to be Eddie Vedder for a period of a couple of years. And then like Kurt Cobain died and Grunge kind of fell out and I grew out of it. But uh, that was where I remember liking the guitar for the first time and being like, that's cool. The solos and the feedback and all of it. And it led me down like the Jimi Hendrix path and everything from there on out. But it was definitely Pearl Jam. That's cool. Um, what are your live show influences? Is there a band that you like want to like emulate their energy? Like when you go and see them, is there a band that just like they're in? Not necessarily your favorite band live, but just you know the energy that you receive from them. You're just like I want my fans to feel that. I always wanted to uh, try and be as terrifying as Bob Meadows from The Life Once Lost. Um, I loved that band. It really bummed me out when they broke up. And I remember seeing them before I knew who they were. I, I, they were opening for someone I went there to see. I forget who. But they stole the show from me because the dude was like a tornado on stage. And he never stopped moving. And he was just growling and snarling into the microphone. And I, I just didn't want to be near him. But I also wanted to keep watching, and so that that's who I always try to think of, like, both captivate and terrify people at the same time. Alright, All right, so, uh, as far as bands to emulate live, I, I kind of jumped to, like, a band like Between the Buried and Me, um, where, you know, the band itself is pretty focused on being just tight in the pocket, and the front man kind of brings the energy in, like, not to say is the show, but kind of is the show. And, and that's, I, I like that. It's interesting. I was going to say Between the Barry and Me as well. Because, ah, um, I mean, as the drummer, I mean, there's not a whole heck of a lot I can do to influence the energy, really. Um, there are certain spots where I, can, where I can stand up and taunt people, but beyond that, I mean... Um, <laughs> You're kind of restricted. Yeah, I am, I am. And those we guys like just get up there. We like to keep you busy enough. The yeah. songs we write should keep you busy enough where you can't do much else but that. Right, right. But, um, yeah, between the Barrett and me, they just get up there and they do their thing and they do it well. So um, there's not there's not a big wild live show and sometimes you're just there to hear some music, you know. Cool. All right, and then um, if you could take a music lesson from anyone living or not, uh, who would it be and why? Well, I'm going to go outside of uh, vocalist territory here and say who I'd take a guitar lesson from would probably be uh, Tosin Obesi from Animals as Leaders. Okay. Just, I, I can't do anything close 
to the least impressive thing he can do. <laughs> but like, I'm sure he could show me something that would blow my mind, and I could use as like one of those tricks you can pull out. Like, you're doing something pretty standard, and then all of a sudden you do something that's like way too advanced for the thing you were doing right before that. I want, I want like something that that fakes it like that from Tosin. I mean, I have an immediate answer. It's outside of metal, um, but there's a guy, Kelly Joe Phelps who is this phenomenal finger-picking slide acoustic player. And if I could steal, like, his hand abilities, like, Matrix style, like, that would be the guy I'd be like, I, I want what you do. Just download it. And just, just take it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, I would just, like that. Just plug him right in the back yeah, of your head. Yeah, if I could. <laughs> if I didn't have to put in the work, that would be great. <laughs> One of the guys that always fascinated me as a drummer was Thomas Hake from The Sugar. Um, you know, I, I started out as a metal singer, um, and I did that for a really long time. Um, but I was always like captivated by his drum work, um, and it always uh, just like the uh, the odd things that he does that a lot of people don't do. Um, I just it was I was kind of drawn to it. So um, you know, that's kind of what got me into playing drums with this guy was just listening to this, bands like that, uh, bands like Intronaut, Sugar, who just have really weird. Um, interesting things to do on drums. So. Cool. And last question, a little bit more lighthearted, but um, artist or celebrity that you would ask your significant other for a free pass if the opportunity came about? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> artist or celebrity? Oh man. This is where my lack of celebrity knowledge Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Justin so woefully out of touch. This is a hard <laughs> question for him to answer. Um, I'm not very current either. My answer is probably like 50 now, but I was about to say like Elizabeth Hurley was the first thing that got, came to my mind. Yes. I, I was remembering her from like. Uh, well, yeah, you could yeah, you could say Dad. Elizabeth Hurley Elizabeth from the Hurley Boston Hour. 15 <laughs> years yeah. ago. Yeah. Yeah. Elizabeth Hurley, 15 years on, ago. That's on that answer. note, I'm gonna say Marissa Tomei because she is ageless. <laughs> ageless. We are so goddamn old, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, she totally looked. I was surprised how good she looked at Spider Man. So. Right? My cousin Vinny, the no. present killer. Nailing it. <laughs> um, yeah, it'll help us out. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, uh, as far as a musician, um, a female I was really attracted to and thought was awesome um, at, at what she does is uh, Channing Crab. Um, trying to remember the name of her band Entheos. Entheos. Um, yeah female fronted uh, band and she is a monster she is one of the most one of the craziest female singers I've ever heard uh, I, I thought she was uh, I thought I find her attractive because that's it <laughs> <laughs> alright and then uh, just the last thing just tell us uh, what Agador has coming up just kind of plug yourself sure uh, we got our debut full length coming out in 2019 uh it's going to be called Creatures of Habit. We should have some snippets for you guys soon. Uh, we'll be releasing a single sometime after the new year and then the full length to come after it. And we're excited for everything that comes after that. We're going to look forward to getting back at shows right away as soon as it's recorded. We start on Thursday. We're very, very excited. All right, and uh, any upcoming shows or social media links that you want everybody to know about? Um, we've got one more show left for the year, right? Yeah, um, December 7th at Hotel Vernon. Um, we're playing with uh, Cazador, uh, Sinking Ship. Sinking. Sinking. And between three and four. Yes. yes. Uh, we've played with a, a few times already, so uh, that one's going to be exciting. Um, Hotel Vernon's great, uh, kind of like this place, a little bit divey, uh, cheap beers. Good place for metal. Yep. Kelly Square, Worcester. Alright. Awesome. Thank you so much. And again, follow these guys, Agador on Facebook. Thank you very much. Yeah.